Lord. Declare your word. It's in the almighty name of Jesus Christ we pray and say, praise God. First John, I want to use this as a, uh, as a back, as a, uh, as a preface for the message today. Titled, uh, Don't Lose Your Fire. Don't Lose Your Fire. In First John chapter 4, we'll read verse number 4. And it says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Praise God. You may be seated. Uh, don't lose your fire. Often what, what happens is that uh, life has a way of kicking us until we tap out. It expects that life circumstances are greater than our will to survive and live and to conquer and to uh, regain our strength and to trust God. Life has a way of trying to not only suffocate us, but when it destroys us, try to move the marker where we were buried so that no one would know where to come and mourn us. Life can be difficult uh, for, for all people, not just for God's people. But John says that you, uh, little children, have already overcome things of this world, so that you are greater um, for that. And he says that because um, that Jesus, the spirit that Jesus left, has deposited within you, and that's greater than anything that is in the world. So we have to learn to respond and live life according to what's in us, not, not what's around us. Um, when we think about how difficult it may be to get from A to B without having the proper resources, that can put a a, a stanch, stanch in your determination, in your drive, in your will to see things better for you in life. But God requires that not only do you have faith, but you activate your faith according to your faith and that you begin to work. And don't allow the circumstances around you to distract you or deter you from what God says is yours. Greater is you greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And let me tell you a story. I want to use John chapter 5 uh, verses 1 through 9 to let you understand how the, uh, the issues of life have a way of stopping you from even going further while you're waiting on something that's already in you. John chapter 5 talks about a man that sits at uh, the pool of Bethesda um, because he's impotent. He can't walk. And there's some issues with him being able to walk. It wasn't from, from birth because it gives a time frame of how long he had been there waiting for a miracle for to allow him to be able to regain his strength. The Bible said that he was there 38 years waiting at this pool of Bethesda um, so that the angel would come and trouble the waters and whomever would step into it would be the one healed. But on this certain day, Jesus happened to, be, happened to come to Jerusalem and when he came to Jerusalem, he set his eyes on this man. And this man uh, intrigued Jesus so much that he walked up to him. And he asked him, when he looked at him, he says, do you wish to be whole? And instead of the man replying with, yes, or I, I desire to be held, to be, held, to be whole, uh, the man in turn went in to declare what his problem was. Verse number four, it says, for an angel uh, will go down into the certain pool and trouble the water, and whosoever First, after the troubling of the water, would step in, would be made whole, and whoever, whatever disease that he had. And this impotent man was saying, verse number six, verse number seven, uh, the impotent man answered and said, I have no man, when the water is troubled, to put me in the pool. But while I'm coming, another step down before me. Now Jesus asked, do you want to be made whole? The man says, what my problem is. Jesus asked, do you want to be healed? The man gave his grievance instead of saying, yes, I want to be made whole. He sat there 38 years waiting for somebody to pack him, to put him into the water. Jesus says, that which you request is already here. That which what you want most dearly is already in you. You don't have to wait for somebody to come do what's already in you. Don't let your fire be put out because you're waiting on someone 
to come save you from your situation. The world itself has built up a barrier, a box between the haves and the have-nots. So if you wait for the world to come to save you from your, your stress, from your uh, the deficiencies, you're going to be waiting a long time. But what God says in John chapter, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, is greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So in essence, everything that I need from the world is already in me because God, the Spirit of God, dwells in me. I can't allow uh, my impotency, whatever that is. Whether it's education, whether it's finance, whether it's gender, whether it's the folks that we associate with, I can't allow my impotencies stop me from getting where God says that I should be. Imagine how much time this man has wasted. 38 years. I went to the same place. However I got there, I went to the same place for 38 years. I waited every day because I wanted to be there when the angel would come down and trouble the water. I waited for somebody to be able to lift me up because I could walk on my own and to put me in, in, the, in, in, in the pool so that I, I was healed. Imagine the opportunities that he missed. Imagine the relationships that he missed. Imagine the blessings that passed him by because he spent all his time waiting on something that was already in. He spent all of his days hoping for somebody to come and do something for him that was already in him to do. Don't allow your fire to be put out because of the pain that stands in front of you. Pain, in essence, is a motivator. Don't you know that even if you can't walk, that you can crawl? If you can't walk, you can get a wheelchair. If you can't walk, you can get some crutches to get to where you need to be. Don't allow your uh, deficiencies. Don't allow your circumstances. Don't allow the, uh, your handicaps to stop you doing other things so that you can say, achieve the same result. All he wanted to do was walk. But what good is walking when you don't have a fire? What good is walking when you don't have no desire, when your will has been doused because um, the pain has got a hold of you? It strangled you. So now even though I can walk, my, my legs aren't even strong. My body isn't strong. My mind doesn't have the same capacity or, 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 or strength that it should have because I've wasted so much time waiting on somebody to do something for me that God says that you've already been equipped to do. Because I thought that I had to wait on uh, the right <coughs> opportunity or the right person uh, to come into my presence for God to do with me what, what it was already in me. That, that I waited on the situation to get better before I started becoming better. That I waited on the people to start to treat me better before I started to treat myself better. That I, that I use all of the excuses that I can't do because I, because I simply can't. No, the, the, the reality is I can't do because I simply won't. It's not that I can't, it's because I, because I won't do it. And I won't do it because I'm looking for somebody to have pity on me. I'm looking for somebody to look at me and say, as the man was sitting at the pool, you know what, he's been here 38 years. Maybe I'll just help him get along, get in the pool, um, so that he can regain his ability to walk. Because I imagine that being there that long, that he's made some friends along the way. That people have seen him every day. They know his name. They know his habits. They know what time he's going to come. They know what time he's going to leave. They know what he's going to wear. They know what he's going to ask. They know everything about him because he's been there so long. But nobody is willing to help you get where you need to be. God said that everything that you require, everything that you need, is wrapped up in the fire that's burning on the inside of you. Jeremiah said it like this. He said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. If you ever put your hand over a stove and you got burned, it didn't take for you to realize a few seconds that you had to move your hand so quickly. Jeremiah's statement that the fire that's in me is so great that I can't do nothing but shout, I can't do nothing but fight, I can't do nothing but proclaim because it's so intent on the inside of me. I have no nothing to do but just to let it out. Don't let the world quench your fire because nobody's coming to help. Nobody's coming to help us if you're not willing to help yourself. If you're not willing to muster up the strength 
to pull yourself wherever you gotta go. If I got to lay on the ground and just drag, just drag myself to God, to God, that's what I have to do. If you're not willing to do that, why do you expect? Why should we, as the people of God that have access to the kingdom of God, why should we benefit if I'm not willing to give it all, give it my all? And the man waited here for 38 years, and when Jesus came. When Jesus asked him, do you want to be whole? He gave him his issues. Told him what was wrong. Don't you think that when, when the Lord asks you a question, that he already knows what's wrong with you? When he asks you for a response, what you need, your response should be, That's, this is what I need. For he said that we should live life and have it more abundantly. He's not concerned about why you're there. He's asking you, how, what do you want? I want to be whole. I want to be free. I want to be healthy. I want to be loved. I want to be, I want to be healed. What do you want? Not what the problem is. Too often we stuck with what the problem is. We need to find the solution. What do you want? He says, well, I ain't got nobody to help me. When the water gets troubled, I, I ain't got nobody to put me in. Jesus is looking, I imagine, with a frown, with a smirk on his face. You know when somebody, you ask somebody something, they don't, they go and beat around the bush, and you got that, that, that look, like, what is he talking about? I, I imagine that's the look that Jesus had on his face when he asked him, I just asked you a simple question. The answer is a yes or no. Do you want to be whole? Do you want to be whole? And Jesus looks at him, without asking him any more, any more questions, and he tells him in verse number seven, verse number eight, uh, rise, take up thy bed and walk. Not speaking to the man's conscious mind, but speaking to the man's spiritual inner man. Because what was already in him was the ability to walk. But because he had sat, so, sat there so long, he lost the desire and the will to walk. Because he felt as if whatever this disease was had overcome him. Because you sit in the place of, 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 of of danger, of, of uh, uh, unforeseen circumstances, of isolation or trouble for so long, we can lose a desire to be able to get ourselves out of it. So we have to learn that we have to speak to the inner man. We have to learn to declare things in our spirit that gets us to the place where we can begin to walk again. We can rehab ourselves. Don't you know that when people go to rehabilitation centers, that the people there don't do anything to their body other than give them the commands to tell their body to respond. They don't do any miracles. There is no medical treatment. All they're doing is telling them to do the thing that's already in them to do because greater is he that is in me than in he that is in the world. They're not telling them, okay, we're going to cut that leg off. We're going to put you a new leg on. We're going to stow some new, some new nerves in there, give you some new muscles. No, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is tell you that you can walk. You can run. You can, you can survive. You can overcome this. You can do it because I believe that you can do it. Now you have to believe that you can do it. Don't let your father be burned out because you ran into some trouble. Because you ran into some things that were, unsus that were unsuspecting until you. Don't let your father uh, be burned out. Every time uh, we move um, from one position in God's kingdom to another position, there is always going to be a trial. The word says that when we go from milk to meat, which means that we go from uh, uh, infants in, in the natural, we go from an infant to a child. In the spiritual, we go from the unlearned to the learned. Whenever we are growing spiritually in God, there's always a test that we're going to have to go, go endure in order for us to get to where God has promised us to get to. It's just like school. In order for you go, to go from one grade to another, you have to be able to pass every test that is placed in front of you. Otherwise, you'll be held back. Um, everything that you do in God, in this 38 years that this man waited, he failed every test because he wasn't willing to look what's inside of him, to see that the Spirit of God lived in him and that all he had to do was command himself to get up and walk. Everything that you and I do, there's a test. Whenever you need to go greater in God's kingdom, there is a test that God will allow to come over you. Um, because he has to move you to a new position so that you can be able to handle whatever thing God is going to bring 
into your uh, into your life, um, but you can't have the attitude of, well, I have nobody to help me. When opportunity comes, I don't have nobody to agree with me, so I can't go by myself. Often your greatest victory will be the victory that you achieve by yourself. And once you achieve that, then you're able to be able to share that with other folks and bring people along into whatever vision that God has granted for you. So don't, uh, don't think that because you haven't uh, uh, got everything that, God, that you believe God for, that doesn't mean God isn't working. That means that we're in a period. We're in a gestation period um, so that the God can move. Um, but if you stay there, oh God, and my complaints in my uh, having pity on myself, having, having uh, a tantrum, tantrum, then don't expect to be anything but to sit at the pool, waiting for all, watching all the other opportunities go by. Because you haven't made your mind up that if I can, if I can just drag my own self in there, I believe that God can. If, if I can just crawl, then I believe that God can. The Bible says that there was a woman that had the issue of blood, and that she had this issue of blood for 12, young, 12, young, 12 long years, and that she had exhausted all of her resources. She spent all of her money. She had borrowed as much as she can. Uh, she had used all kinds of physicians to, to go through, and none of them could help. But when she saw Jesus, the Bible said, and Jesus was in the crowd of the multitudes, when she saw Jesus, the Word says, that she found the strength to be able to get from wherever she was in whatever condition she, she was in to touch the hem of his God. Um, I'm asking you that you let your fire be that uh, so, so, uh, uh, so intense that whatever you need to get from God, that you go from wherever you are in whatever condition you are in to be able to just to touch the hem of God. To just be able to touch the hem of Jesus so that he can make you whole. We're all broken. Because we've been through so much. We've trusted people that we shouldn't have trusted. We've accepted things that we shouldn't have accepted. We allow things that we shouldn't have allowed. But God is just asking you, do you want to be whole? He knows what you've already been through. He's asking, do you want to be whole? The question should be, yes, Lord. Absolutely, God. Right now, Father, what are you waiting on? I want to be whole. And I need to be whole because I want to do the, the very best that I can do for you. And I can't do it if I'm not whole. I need to be whole. You don't have to heal me, but here I have to be whole. You don't have to change my physical appearance. You don't have to change, manifest anything in me, but I need spiritually to be whole. Don't let your fire be quenched um, by the opponent that you're up against right now. Stop crying yourself to sleep over things that God says that he can deliver you from. You have to believe that it's in the will of God to deliver you from that so that you will become more than a conqueror, so that you become victorious and not a victim. But we are stuck in the process, the 38 years of whatever, the 20 years, 15, 10 years, whatever it is, we're stuck in that and the Lord is begging. He's knocking on your door. He's at your heart saying, do you want to be whole? The man, Jesus, told him, rise, take up your bed, and walk. Verse number 9 says, and immediately the man was made whole. Don't you know that we don't have to wait 20 years for the Lord to do something he can do immediately. We don't have to wait till the degree is done for the Lord to be able to do something immediately. We don't have to wait for another day to come. We don't have to wait for the morning to get here for the Lord to do something immediately. All we have to do is believe. He didn't change anything about the man. But he changed the man. The man changed his belief. 
He didn't even know who Jesus was because of the way that he spoke to him. He thought he was someone that was just concerned, had a question about his condition. He didn't address him by Lord, by your majesty, uh, by friend. He didn't address him in any way other than his issue. So he did not even know that he was in the presence of the Almighty. And Jesus spoke to his enemy. God is trying to speak to you, and you have to know that immediately you can be made whole. So whatever that pain is, he says that if you give it to me immediately, you'll be made whole. Whatever that concern is, that if you give it to me immediately, you will be made whole. Whatever struggling you, whatever keeps you up at night, whatever infuriates you, whatever enrages you, whatever makes you want to become something, whatever makes you want to be so isolated that the world doesn't see you, no one sees you, that you walk in people's shadow, whatever that is that you need to get off of you, God says that if you just answer my question, I, I want to know, do you want to be whole? He said, whatever that is, immediately, it will be done. You don't have to wait for weeping may do for a night time. But joy, we don't have to wait for that. He says that immediately upon the, 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 the command from the Lord Almighty, he was made whole. And the man did what? The man took his bed up. The thing that he had been laying on for 38 years, as raggedy as, he, as it was, wrapped it underneath his arm and took off walking. Hadn't walked in 38 years, but because he believed what Jesus said, because he believed that Jesus said to get up and walk, that he got up and he walked because he believed it. What are you believing God for now? What in your life do you need to wrap it up? Put it on my shoulder and I need to walk away from it. I might need to walk away from, from some folks. I might need to walk away from some people that I attach myself to. I need to wrap it up, put it on my shoulders and just walk on off. Because I believe that God says that there is a greater future for me, not standing here in the midst of my trouble, but over there on the other side. The only way I can get there is to take my mind to where God says that I should be. I don't have to move physically, but I have to change the way I think. My mentality has to change. My attitude has to change. And I'm not talking about, you know, your... your um, that thing, you know, whatever you call that. I'm talking about your perspective has to change on the way that I view where I am because I want to get to the immediate. I don't know about you, but I've got some things that I'm going, that I'm dealing with that I need God to, to deal with me immediately about. I, I've got some stuff um, that I've laid out on the, on the floor and I need God to be able to tell me that it's time to pick it up and go because he's already dealt with that. So whatever that is that you have right now, I believe God is saying that your fire has not gone out. The problem is that you're not willing to fan. And when you learn that you have to fan, that you fan that fire, and the more air you put on, the bigger the fire gets. And the bigger the fire gets, the more it will consume. And the more that it consumes, the more debris that is in front of you, and the more space that you have available to, be, to claim that is yours. So what I need God to do, I just need God to have a forest fire with my life and go ahead and burn out everything that is in front of me so that God can give me all the things that he said that I shall occupy. The word says that because I am a, uh, entangled in God, because I am the heir, because of this, the heritage is that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That means that my trouble... My pain, my disagreements, my unfortune, whatever I'm going through, even though it's created, it will not prosper, but I have to deal with my inner man and believe that greater is he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. I have to believe that. I can't lay down my will and pick up the will of depression and allow it to riddle pain in my life. I, I, I can't lay down my will and, and, and pick up the will of racism and allow it to, to, to riddle pain in my I, I can't lay down my will and pick up uh, the, the will of the, 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 the molester, the abuser. I can't allow my will to be picked up and replaced with that. I have to pick up the will of God. So if God says that you've already overcome, that means this 38 years that you've been sitting, you wasted. Because he said you already overcome. 
That means the five years that you've been sitting there dealing with it. You've already overcome it. That means the week that you've been going back and forth with that, you've already overcome it. That means the hour that you spent dwelling on that, he says you already overcome it. Because great. So what do you do? As God is, is uh, So patiently and persistently waiting for you to make your mind up. On whose report you gonna believe? It's funny how we uh we believe the spirit of the doctor, but 